Howdy all, this is Texas Gaming Industries here, and welcome back to another episode of my Let's Play a Transport Fever 2 for Remote Edition. In the previous episode, we basically started up a new intercity bus service between the towns of Kingsburg and Granite, as there are no rail, well, no direct rail access between the two, but we also acquired some newer diesel power as well. Before the beginning of the episode, I basically took care of replacing many of the aging diesels on our roster with much more modern replacements. And in this episode, we're going to continue on basically improving a lot of the more of our operations and services here. Speaking of which, now with the new road connecting the two destinations, the entirety of the line is... This road is basically becoming a lot more modern. And plus, we might as well add some new modern railroad crossing gates. While they're a little bit different from the original from the, from the ones that we have put in a long, long time ago, they're still very much important. Which is spare which is the reason why most of my trains are basically now basically well we got a lot of new modern equipment new so new modern pieces of equipment on our operation, so that's a reason enough for basically adding new, uh, well, you know what I mean. But anyway, in this episode, we're going to try to see if we can get any of the last bits of goods work finished. Because I already have taken care of some of the things already that's been needed to be done. Though we still have a little bit of ways to go. I think we need to now get started on is delivering loads of uh, stone to the calcium carbonate construction plant, which, along with the calcium carbonate mineral, will allow us to basically turn that mineral into, well, cement. Now let's have a look at the industry list. Cedar Point Calcium Carbonate plant, and Construction Materials Plant. It doesn't have any carbon... I don't think it has any uh, calcium carbonate in it right now. That I'm not so sure. But, however, we could actually invest in something that could help with the production of this of the stuff at this factory. That is, if my game wants to basically behave itself for some darn reason. Well, let me see. Maybe I could actually invest in a stone quarry not too far from the river. From the industries. I mean, I already have stone being delivered up here to this location. So, why not just invest in something a little bit? I probably might just invest in something else. Well, not invest in something else, but maybe just invest in a stone quarry. Oh, we also have a new industry available to buy. The, ba the Battersea Power Station. Although this is a British power plant, it could still be very beneficial. Though I'm not so sure where we're going to place it. But we'll decide on that in the future part. But I don't know even if we are really are going to build it. Because it's the 80s, it's about to become the 90s, and coal-powered power plants don't seem that very clean. Especially in this particular era. I mean, sure, some of the... Some of the stuff that's been about in currently in the real world is, doesn't apply to in this world, but I might have to eventually consider our options for some things. But, however, one thing's for sure this new stone quarry nearby Shinestead. We'll provide stone for that calcium carbonate uh, construction materials plant. 
Furthermore, I believe once that first delivery of calcium carbonate is delivered, I believe that we basically have served every type of industry on the map. Well, not every industry, but one of each industry in the region. Like we served all the minerals, all the liquids, all the farming products, all the processed products, and transported at least one of every type of commodity needed in towns as well. Let's just continue expanding the station a bit for the trucks. Now, let's see, uh... Cedar Point Road Depot. Let's basically set up about... Let's see, Trucking Convoy C. Pick up stone from the quarry and take it to the Cedar Point to transfer. Now we just need to buy some trucks to carry that load. Let's see. We need to p find trucks that can carry loads of stone. We could use the Kentworth W900. Or the Peterbilt 352s. Although, I think we probably might actually use these. And I'll probably like about buy four of these trucks. Let's see, Cedar Point has its loads of, let's see, cigarettes and foodstuffs are being brought in. Lubricants as well, but not alcoholic barrels. And let's see, where this let's see. Where are the alcohol barrels normally located? I think it's in the commercial district. Because each town needs to have both industrial and needs to both have industrial and commercial goods. Oh. Alcohol barrels are industrial goods. So let's see. Cigarettes. Uh Hmm. This is more into the commercial area. Let me see. Food stuffs. That's still being carried by electrics. Hmm. Maybe I might reassign the electrics to go onto this. Interest deliver the loads of alcohol barrels by. Ro oh, originally now demands machinery. But I made. But don't all my cities basically only carry about four types of commodities? I'm not so sure. It should be the case. Yeah, why is the city basically except machinery when the city is only supposed to carry about four commodities at a time? Oh, great, a traffic jam. That's all I need right now. Let me see. This is going to be a bit of a pr tricky, tricky situation right here. And Ridgeland now needs packaging gardens? What? How does that make any sense? Oh, here's the problem. This electric commuter train is blocking the way at the junction. And it's not allowing the other trains to get through. And 
how come this section of track hasn't... Oh. There we go. At least the catenary now basically does not extend towards this. Oh, no wonder. This train needs to get into the, commute, into the station as well. Hmm. Maybe it is time to actually extend this track a bit. It's been a while since I last extended any bits of track on this railroad. But it will basically just go on the same lines as going alongside the normal commuter train. Well, alongside the, well, electric line. But there will be a small enough switch, basically any electric commuter train can enter the same station at the same time. And we'll also need to convert this signal to something else. And do that as well. Perfect. Now, I don't know why my game is lagging all of a sudden, but I'm pretty sure it might be just because I swapped out a lot of locomotives and a lot of equipment in the game is still trying to process all of this. But, however, with our new freight diesels in service, we can at least allow them to handle much more modern tasks. Though I think all of my equipment do need a bit of a touch-up. So, I'll give all of my equipment full-on, very high maintenance. So that way, they can all be given a good look at and cleaned up. game will start playing normally again, but it'll just be a little while, I suppose. Uh, when, the game, when my game lags, it feels so Yeah, most of the diesels I replaced now have been changed to their different person designs. The GP30s are now replaced by the GP38-2s, Granite needs fruit juices now. The GP38s have been replaced with the SD40s, and the SD40s have been replaced by the new General Electric freight diesels that we received in the last episode. Now, Granin demands fruit juice? What? I was certain that all my towns were only set to four commodities. Just four, not five or even six. However, though, at least most of the towns are being served with goods. I mean, Kingsburg has already gotten a lot of fuel and packaging gardens, but it hasn't grown big enough to basically accept a new commodity yet. Let's see, which city has the most growth? Blue Water City? At a 280% growth rate. I mean, I haven't delivered any fuel in the town yet, but sweet goodness sakes, that's a lot of growth for a city. If the game could basically allow me to get over there. Yeah, 
Blue Water City already has a lot of is growing quite well. Though this train is not to pick up anything else on when it drops off its load. And there is a train already set up to pick up fuel from the fuel deep from the, from the fuel refinery. But we have yet to see it. However, the Blue City Airport is actually doing alright, by the look of things. In fact, there has been a lot of people traveling there since 83, yet with 81 people coming in. Let's see. Truck service C3. It will reach some of the industrial buildings if it's delivered there by rail. But, however, I think I might actually have to set up a new truck service to deliver fuel into town. Since this is truck service C3, I'll set up a new service E4 and deliver it into town. Truck service C4. Green. Full load. And the only commodity it will be picking it up there will be fuel. And, of course, I need to get a truck that carries fuel. Granted, now has packaging cartons that need to be brought in. Alright, now with fuel, it will basically increase the demand needed. Speaking of demand, I actually want to know how well my trolleys, how my trolleys have been. Maybe it's time for a bit of an upgrade. Yeah, a lot of my trolleys have seen better days. Let's see, let's replace this aging one with something a bit more modern. The Toronto CRLV. Well, actually, in fact, all of my trolleys will have this design now. It will save time. Because now, with the more modern trolleys, I can at least be able to use them around the cities a little bit more to showcase that even old streetcar systems are still worth it in many towns and cities. Let's see. What else can be changed? Well, there's plenty of foodstuffs waiting to be picked up. The cannery... Oh my gosh! Over 10,000 units of meat?! That's a lot! But I think I know the reason why there's not much aluminum being brought to the cannery to be processed. And the, you see, how much aluminum is being brought in? There's no aluminum. And where is that drain of bauxite? Oh, it's on its way now, but I think I might have to change how much bauxite is, is carried in these cars. Because I think 640 is not going to be enough for so while the train is moving, I'll just basically replace these old hoppers. Replace them with something a little more bigger. Let's see. Let's see. Capacity. These are basically the biggest ones that we can carry in the box. So, let's see. Let's see how many we can get from the large amounts. 690, so a bit, a little bit of an increase by 50 units. However, they do not show up in the cars for some odd reason. So, I might have to replace them with something that I can basically see here.
I guess I could just basically use a couple of these hoppers, actually. Probably be better. Better. Oh. Oh dear. Uh. <laughs> something is off here. I mean, this one is okay, but the rest are literally just invisible. Now, these iron ore jennings, not gonna work. They're 45, and I need to have speed as much as possible. I actually spruce this train up a bit with a couple of couple, several former railroad ones. Let's just say that we're let's just say some of the hoppers that we have bought were basically purchased second hand from railroads that no longer exist and just didn't work. better. That works a lot better. I mean, sure, these hoppers... I mean, there's a lot of these hoppers from railroads that are no longer around. But, they will eventually will age over time. But that just gives them their distinctive charm. Now a lot of my other trains are basically waiting to get into Leamington and blocking up the main road here. Oh right, because of the mainline junction. Well, we're about to reach the year 1990 after a while and complete we basically only have about a few more years until the end of the until the end of the 19th century. Well, not 19th, the end of the 20th century is basically approaching. We could eventually basically buy a passenger diesel and replace the aging Alco RS ones because, as much as I like them, they're starting to look a little bit out of date, along with their old passenger stock. I mean, sure, some enthusiasts would be happy to see that these are still operating even after a bop after over 50 years of revenue service. But, let's just be real. This, our railroad needs to basically be a little more profitable than it really is. Let's see, if the Greenwood round, the Greenwood sheds are doing alright. Let me see, how big the city has grown? Well, it has every commodity it's brought in, although I need to ship in more lubricants by road. Speaking of which, what about the commodities served here at the city? At Lemonton? I still need to deliver lubricants, and I still need to deliver loads of silverware. But the Lemonton Central Station is very much packed, especially for Local Train 6. And I believe once we reach the year 1990, I think we'll basically get a lot of new vehicles to work with. Let's see, Ford Escort, which is a new automobile, which we're not going to use. The Lexus LS400. Uh, let's see. 
Reno Silo because I installed a car pack that introduces about several 19, 1990-era automobiles into the game. Skoda, which is European. Don't know why they would be Skodas in the United in this US style map, but Toyota Land Cruiser. Chevrolet Chevelle, a new bus, the new flyer D40, several new boats, the Merlin, new repainted diesel, Conrail Gondola. Oh, some new covered hoppers. We could basically replace the old original covered bay covered hoppers with these. There are two bay free, and I think that's basically it. So I think in our next episode, we'll basically focus on getting those old covered hoppers we have in our fleet replaced, and hopefully get some new equipment. But other than that, if you had enjoyed this episode of my Let's Play Transport Fever 2 Free Mode Edition, please be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to Texas Gaming Industries for new video uploads every Friday or Saturday, depending on my outside schedule. And as always, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you all in the next episode. Bye!